mean no. Okay, okay. Happy New Year and welcome to the first edition of the From the Fabricator podcast for 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Max Perlstein. We are back again for another year of podcast fun, and I appreciate you joining me. And a new advertiser this year, or a returning advertiser, this edition of the From the Fabricator podcast is brought to you by our friends at myglassclass.com. That is the ultimate destination for glass and glazing training. Go visit myglassclass.com dot com to see the range of classes in ease of use more than a hundred courses available with new ones being added every day and note more than 60 of them will come in spanish as well it's on-demand training 24 7 advance your career advance the staff of yours career your co-workers career this is a great chance this is a uh, a, a wonderful product. I'm a big believer in myglassclass.com. It was built by the National Glass Association with lots of input from industry professionals. So you know this thing is the real deal. It is legitimate. And check it out today. Go online, myglassclass.com. Thank you so much for sponsoring the from the Fabricator podcast. And so we are back and running here in 2023. A couple notes before we get to our interviews. Uh, really excited about the year ahead. Uh, you know, we got big things coming. The biggest for me right out of the gate will be BEC in March. That'll be here before you know it. Registration opens on January 11th. So depending on when you watch this, it's either about to open or it is already open. So go ahead, get registered. If you don't have your hotel rooms already, get them right away. Uh, so th those are already open no matter what time you watch this. So BEC coming soon. It is going to be fantastic. 25th anniversary. We're bringing back some of the uh, the old gang, too. Um, I can't wait to see some of these folks that will return uh, to the first time to the BEC stage in a long, long time. So uh, that is coming up in March in Las Vegas. Learn more at glass.org. BEC coming up soon. Cannot wait. All right. Enough of me. Great schedule today. Uh, we kick it off with with Artie Felis of uh, of of CRL CR Lawrence. Um, he's the president there. Uh, it was a really fun interview. Uh, gave some uh, excellent food for thought. Obviously, they're a powerhouse in this industry. Do a lot of good things, and uh, you you can tell uh, things are really focused on the customer and the customer experience. And so Artie and I, you know, chop it up for a little while. Then. I connect with the great Tom O'Malley, the nicest and most popular guy in the glass and glazing industry. Uh, again, uh, interesting to see his growth. Had a, had some some great takes too about uh, what surprises him in this industry, and uh, also the growth of Clover, which is exciting. And then I wrap it up with a youngster uh, in this industry. I, I, he's not that young, but he's a younger guy, younger than me, and and, and guys like Tom, uh, and that's Sam Olson from JA Glass in uh, in the Minnesota area. So check all three out. That is coming up now, and I will see you on the other side. We start off with Artie. Here he goes. Okay, okay. We kick things off in 2023. I am thrilled and honored to have Artie Felis, president of CR Lawrence. And you can find them, of course, if you don't know, you're living under a rock probably, but you can find them at <laughs> www.crlawrence.com. New website, relatively new website and great stuff. And I'm thrilled to have Artie on. Artie, thank you for taking the time. Oh, Max, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, again, uh, this is this is exciting. CRL obviously has a massive footprint in our industry, extremely well known. You're at the top of the company, uh, but I, I feel like not a lot of people know you, uh, you know, very well. So part of it was for me was to get to know you a little bit and and get you know start with your past and your path uh, all the way up to becoming president at CRL uh, back in 2021. Well, let's see. How about I go all the way back to the beginning? Please bring it. <laughs> so, look, I've uh, I grew up um, in San Bernardino, so on okay. the Inland Empire in, in uh, Southern California. Um, I am from a very ethnic a Greek family. Both my parents are immigrants from Greece, and I grew up. Uh, basically, there was a, a couple things that really focused uh, my family. Uh, first was um, obviously the family. We we're very very close knit. Me and my two brothers, my parents, uh, my dad had an automotive repair shop. So actually he had growing up, he had three jobs um, oh, wow. just to you know, put ends meet on the table. And it, to be candid, I kind of hardly remember my dad growing up because he would work at the shop, he, you know, turning wrenches. And then he would come home, stay for, 
I don't know, maybe a half an hour. And then he would go work in a restaurant. Um, and so, gosh, he would get home at midnight and the, the day would start at 6 a.m. again. So, uh, you know, look, we were very, very close. Very important was the family and also our faith. Uh, we went to church every Sunday. Right. Um, and we still do. Uh, yeah. And uh, still, that was really kind of growing up very, let's say, um, you know, middle class. And in, in, for me, <clears throat> uh, I would spend in my, let's say, my high school years. Mm-hmm. after after school i was down at the shop right. and i was you know doing all the changes i was i was a pro at cleaning toilets i was really good at that and, and getting your hands dirty that's for sure every everything yeah. and and i gotta tell you the, the reason for me and a little bit about me um you know look i learned i would say the most important things about business at that shop yeah and it was really simple stuff it was 4.55, we closed at 5, and I was like, well, it's time to start closing the roll-up doors. My dad said, what are you doing? <laughs> almost 5 o'clock. He goes, is it 5 o'clock yet? Right, right. <laughs> that was good. I remember another time, it was really hot. San Bernardino can get very warm, Max. I mean, sure. summers were 115. And, you know, I, it was hot, so I went into the office because there was a little AC working there in the window. Guy comes in. What are you doing? It's hot outside. He goes, you see everybody else in here. So anyway, it's all about. And I also remember clearly how my dad would deal with customers in that humility. Right. So I, if you think about it, those are the kind of the three takeaways for me. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I worked at the shop through high school, and then I, I went away to college. I was the first in my family to kind of go away to college, okay. uh, which you- was a big deal. Yeah, you know, I can uh, imagine. It's, I can imagine. Where'd you go? Where'd you go to college? Uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Okay, Fighting Irish. Got it. Fighting Irish. There you go. So, and that was a big deal too because, um, you know, no one in my family had gone, and I kind of also had recognized the hard work being done at the shop to pay for my education. Mm-hmm. So that was a big motivator to me to 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 recognize really what I was kind of what I was doing in college. Right. So I was on a first name. I was telling my son this last night. Because he's now applying to college, and um, I said, "Gosh, I was on a first name basis with everybody in the library." So yeah. that's what college is like, because it's all about the work and the effort you put into something. It, it's and, it's it's funny you said that. Two two things, and I'll let you continue. One is I, I, I'm definitely going to ask you about going from Southern California to South Bend, because that winter, that first winter, had to be special for you. Uh, and second, I love the, the library story because my daughter, my daughter's goal in life is that she wants the library at her university to be named after her someday because she spent so much time there. So uh, I, 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 I get that. But 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 before you continue, <laughs> that first winter in South Bend, my friend, I'm curious what you thought because you're going from 115 in the summers in uh, in Southern Cal to uh, nothing in cold in in Indiana. Yeah. So first, this is this is a true story, Max. Here. Um, first snow now mind you i had never been in snow overnight oh so my gosh. the first snow at notre dame i, I went to class <clears throat> now mind you in the midwest first snow you got jeans and it may be a long sleeve t-shirt right but you're most likely just got your your polo shirt you're fine right first yeah. snow i've got a parka <laughs> boots hoodie gloves you you think that it was you know the the second or third ice age was yep. coming, but anyway, yep. I got used to it quickly, and it, it it turned out to be a great experience. Nice, nice, I like it. Okay, so so you go to Notre Dame. Uh, continue on. Sorry. And then um, after that, I went into public accounting. So okay. um, I went from there to a company called BDO Seedman, and I'd studied accounting. Actually, I'd balanced my um, uh, my major. I was actually, believe it or not a couple courses away from a theology my minor or uh, uh all and I shouldn't say or even philosophy because I really okay. found that you know accounting very binary numbers mm-hmm. you know but I kind of need that balance and I really sure. enjoyed you know theology not necessarily religion but theology the study of religion uh and philosophy also to kind of balance um at least you know my curriculum so but from there I went into public accounting yeah. and then I had a uh a, my one of my audits at the time in public accounting was a company called Edelbrock Corporation, okay. automotive okay. aftermarket, right? Okay. And um, because of my experience at the shop growing up, I knew what a cylinder had a camshaft, a water pump, a fuel pump. I knew how sure. everything worked. Sure, you had to work on engines. 
So they at the time were looking for a, a controller, someone to run their accounting and finance. Uh, and it just worked out. It was yeah. a good opportunity for me. Um, I was there for 16 years and had various roles from accounting to operations, even did a stint in engineering, uh, running engineering, not doing engineering, but just kind of managing it from an administrative perspective. Great experience. Uh, absolutely. And, and curious, did your dad ever pressure you to come back and work in the business since you had the now a business acumen you know, officially? Uh, did you feel that pressure at all? No, and mainly because I was, I guess, and maybe, we, although not practice in a formal way, but this might sound odd, but primal geniture. I was the youngest of three boys. Okay. So my oldest brother, basically, he still runs the business today. Got it. Got it. Active, and that's kind of how it worked. And, you know, for me, um, I just found that I was better at math and numbers. And so I just went the path of, of finance. Makes sense. Makes sense. I just, um, I, I didn't know, you know, because I come from a family business and, and yeah, my old, my older brother and sister, they were in the business forever. I had, I didn't really have any desire to get into it. Uh, you know, I eventually ended in it and that's where I'm at today. But uh, in the, in the glass industry, I didn't know though, you know, again, with you going away to Notre Dame and, and the experience that you got, if you felt that pressure from the family to uh, come on back and, you know, help us with the business sort of thing. Yeah. You know, one thing that I missed most about the business was the camaraderie. Was, yeah. Just being around the, the family and being around the the, the customers there and because you got to know them and, and the employees. So that's probably what I missed the most. Cool. Very cool. Um, so I was at uh, BDO Seedman and then after that, uh, Edelbrock. And then uh -huh. um, I was at Edelbrock for 16 years. And then I just kind of knew in my, in my heart of hearts, I wanted to make kind of one more move. Gotcha. Uh, in my career before I, you know, kind of wrap it up. And uh, so at, at that point, uh, there was an opportunity to come work at Sierra Lawrence. And that was probably a week away from 14 years ago. Wow. Okay. Coming up on the uh, anniversary. Wow. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It was January 2nd. I think right when I started, I might get my math a little bit wrong there. I'd started, it was an interesting time to start because it was literally um, Lehman Brothers had closed. The the Great Recession was last the previous September, and here I am, you know, changing careers. Uh, and I started off here in finance, uh, CFO. Yeah. And um, you know, look, it was a it was a great, great opportunity, great time to to start and in, in come into a, a new career at a new business. Um, and I've I've been here, like I said, you know, going on my 14th year various roles, uh, primarily CFO about four ish years ago, uh, I became division president for us operations. Okay. And then a couple of years ago, a year and a half or so, uh, president, um, of Sierra Lawrence. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, uh, I interesting that you, you're a little different than, you know, most though I've, I've had some conversations with people that have had to either start something new in the teeth of the recession or the teeth of COVID, whatever the case may be. And and you almost, <laughs> you you, you kind of did both. I mean, you you started at CRL in the teeth of the recession, and then you yeah. became president smack dab in the middle of COVID. Uh, so exactly. that's a, a heck of a, a double uh, a, a double blast there. But it seems like you welcome those challenges. No, they're really, I think, look, I think there's great opportunity in, if you just look back at the last few years between COVID now, which is of course very unfortunate because obviously uh, the impact it had on society. Right. Um, but how the world has changed, just take, just take the last three years between COVID and remote work. And um, let's also throw in our supply chain and realizing yeah. how fragile our supply chain is. And when I say our, I'm saying the world's our, yeah. right? When you go and it, <laughs> When when COVID started, and all of a sudden there's no toilet paper, yeah. <laughs> everything, and it just and and the point really is is just how fragile it is, right? And how everything works. Maybe in some respects, it's just um, it's so optimized that any increase in demand beyond whatever something that's just very small it just disrupts the whole process, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but what I what I my, my position on that. Max, seriously, is that there's opportunity there. Sure. And the the, the question is, is what, do you, what are we going to learn from it? How are we going to become better at what we do, right, as a company and as individuals to continue to serve our customers, right? I, so I, there is opportunity there. I, absolutely. And, and that segues into a question I had down for you is that managing – the supply mm -hmm. chain, and I, I have to, I, I have to admit that it's got to be wild. You have so many SKUs, 
you 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 have so many products. The pressure of of trying to keep up with that. Um, you know, how did you guys, you know, you and the team deal with that, and how are you continuing to deal with that today? Because I don't think by any sense of the imagination we're back to any sort of normal. It's still a challenge. Uh, you know, what what have you done to you know ease and and uh, you know make the supply chain uh, you know more amenable for you and and all of your customers throughout the country? So. I would say when it comes to supply chain or, or, or just the issue in general really is the easy thing to do is to say, yep, we don't have it. <laughs> and, or don't even say we don't have it and don't say anything. So the question is, is how do we improve our measurement? How do we uh, communicate openly and transparently with our customers? How do we prioritize our customers' needs, right? Because that, that becomes um, very important. Also, it is with our suppliers is kind of fostering strong relationships with them. We yeah. have to have that. And there's really one thing is you, what, those three or four things I just said, it, it gets bound together. Uh, Max, at least in my opinion, in the opinion of CRL is taking care of your team. Yeah. Right. Because think about it when you're dealing with a customer and, and customers are the reason for our being. Yeah. Right. And you know, think about the frontline people that are, you know, the, the team that is managing customer expectations. And we have to make sure that they're well equipped to handle the challenges. Right. Uh, and at the same time that the people who are managing our suppliers are well equipped to manage the challenges of our suppliers. Right. If because, you know, if our supplier is shut down or you know, they can't get employees or COVID or they're being whatever it is. Look, that, that's a challenge. And yeah. so it, it's really kind of juggling all that, but it really comes back to our customers being close with our, our suppliers and binding it all with our employees. Absolutely. And you have, uh, you know, you know, people like Scott Goodman, who is a longtime friend of mine, you, you have some excellent uh, Dave Nelson, some, some really wonderful oh, yeah. people in your world uh, that I think help make a difference to help explain the message and keep people up to speed because I think that's the communication is, is a huge part of it. So it sounds like you've, you, you've identified the situation and you're doing the best you can up against uh pretty, you know, continuing monumental, uh, you know, headwinds. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it, it it's something that I believe we're a better company for, you know, and, and, and that really is like, like I said before, Max, if the easy thing is to say, can't do it, can't sell it. Right. Right. That's easy. Just walk away. Right. Yeah. Just walk away. And, uh, you know, look, uh, I'll use a math equation since I enjoy math. Um, I like to think that, you know, challenges plus hard work equal opportunity. It's just that simple. Yeah. So there's a challenge supply chain. All right. Let's put some work into it. Let's understand it. Let's measure it. Let's figure out where there is potential waste that we can eliminate, et cetera, et cetera. Then create opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. That's I'm with. Yeah, you, you're dead on. You're dead on. I'm with Artie Felis, president of CR Lawrence. You can find them online, crlawrence.com. Uh, again, thrilled to have you here. And, and so we're talking about, we just talked about the tough part of, of the world right now with the challenges. Now I want to switch over to what is energizing you about CRL today, CR Lawrence today? I mean, uh, Glass Build, the booth was jumping. Uh, you know, Krista and company were doing a great job in there. Uh, you know, what, what's got you energized about CRL right now? I, I need, it's, that's a tough one. Kind of where to begin. Uh, there <laughs> it's is it's so pretty much. wide open. I, no, I kind of gave really, it, gave you a silver platter here. You can, you can pick, pick what you want. Yeah. Well, I, I would probably start with in terms of what energizes me the most are our people. Yeah. Um, and the team, the CRL team, I couldn't be more pleased with where we're at. We have gotten, we've gotten a lot. Let's say we've gone through, you mentioned our new website, that digital transformation that we went through. Um, that's just one of many things as an organization that we continue to 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 evolve and become better at, at what we do. And I look at where we're at today, and I think about our people, our systems, our products, and how well equipped we are. That you know, there there are potential headwinds coming with the economy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, look at just what happened in, you know, middle of December with the Fed saying, gee, you know, we're going to continue to raise rates. And the, the broader market says, OK, well, th that's going to tip the economy in a recession. Uh, take that, put it in the context of uh, ABI, right? right? Negative, it's below 50, negative, 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 right? There's a huge however to that. 
Now, however, none of that really concerns me about our future, right? It's mm -hmm. not as if, again, the easy thing to say is, eh, you know, it's going to be a tough economy. No, the positive thing is how do we take those next steps? Yeah. How do we continue on the journey that we're on today? The digital transformation, the supply chain enhancements, everything that we're doing on a constant basis. And the foundation of all that are our people, right? Yeah. And I'm just so in, in, I almost want to say in awe of or impressed with the people here at CRL. That's what energizes me to come into work every morning and to be a part of this great team. I, I like what someone says here about the inverted pyramid. I'm not on the top. I'm on the bottom. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It's, it's true, though. Yeah. I'm not on the top. Yeah. I need to find ways to make our people more effective and how to help them, you know, with their everyday tasks. It really is those frontline people, the frontline people that are answering calls for our customers, the frontline people that are picking orders, the frontline people that are fabricating many of the great products at our manufacturing uh, facilities, and also taking calls, taking care of our suppliers. Those are the people that matter the most. And it's big. It's it's important. Uh, you know, and I, I like that you hit on that because so many people take the supply chain both ways for granted. You know, mm -hmm. and and I think that you're taking the right approach of you know making sure everybody's on the same page and and really respecting and appreciating that. And again, mm -hmm. with your people, you know, there's so many good ones. I spent uh, several hours in a van with Danny Estrada, and he was fantastic and an uh, impressive guy. First time meeting him, so uh, just uh, you know, I've named a few, and and there's a ton yeah. uh, that work under you, and so I could see why that energizes you. So kudos to you and the team there. Yeah, no, no, look, it, 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 there, yeah, and you're talking about the, the van. I thought that was such a great, uh, a great deal that, uh, that we sponsored. Are you talking, talking about the road to Glassville? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I, I, and I remember being at Glassville and, and talking to Andrew Herring about that and how excited he was and, um, you know, driving the van. And I just think the whole thing was terrific. So, yeah, there, there really is, um, a lot of excitement here. Um, so, and, and as I think about, you know, Glassville, uh, in particular, look, we are so passionate about our industry yeah, and we're always looking for opportunities to, to connect with our customers and really our peers. And I look at Glassbuild as an example of learning, listening, collaborating, right? We want to build on this whole strong future that, that I know the glazing community has. Yeah. And look, it may not, we not, we may not sell iPhones or uh, uh, fancy cars, it's glass and it's glass accessories. I couldn't be more excited about that. I love Why? It. Because it, the satisfaction comes from dealing with customers and their satisfaction. Sure. Right. Recognizing the impact that we can have on them with that sense of humility. So when we go to glass build, we're able to show, uh, you know, new products. I know there are some exciting products that we, we had our, our, our DRX, um, uh, door rail. We had a new online program for sure hours online. A lot of exciting things that, that we did. But more importantly, we're, we're just happy to be part of the community, part of the glazing community. And what, what Glassbuild means to us, um, it's, it's incredible from all of the events. You know, I, I don't think we sponsored, for example, Women in Fenestration. But I know that Barbara Hawksman took a huge group of, we have a lot of women that yes, run, do. This, yes. what, run this company, Yes. right? Yep. And I, when I saw the photo I, again, just in awe, I'm like, this is just so awesome. It's great. Yeah. Bar Barbara's a superstar. And I had her on this podcast, uh, real early on and she, she dealt with my learning curves. I feel like I'm a better interviewer now than I was with her. <laughs> uh, I, I had to work my way up to you, but she was fantastic. And, uh, and, and I did see her and a lot of your team at that women in, in glass and fenestration event, yeah. which was spectacular and just the start of many good things coming. So again, your support and CRL support of the industry is huge uh, and very important. So for me, from an industry guy, thank you for that. That's uh, that means a ton. It really does. Thank you for, for stepping up. Well, I don't, I don't see that stopping. I mean, I know good. in having conversations at glass build is, you know, how do we do more? Yeah. How do we, um, you know, I, it that really is, is is how do we continue to support uh, the industry, and and that could be you know working with with you and your team um, through sponsorships, education, you know whatever it might be. Um, I know that we have a some some good people on various committees. Yep. Um, and and that having active participation is 
absolutely critical. Because again, it allows us to connect with the glazing community. Education is incredibly important. Dealing and, and going and meeting with our customers and also, you know, other suppliers there. It's it's all about networking and 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 it really is great, Max. It really it re is. It, and it's crucial. It's it's smart that you do it. A lot of a lot of companies get it, but a lot don't. A lot don't understand the values of being involved in the industry. You guys do and continue to do. And I love hearing that you're excited about moving forward with it. Uh, so I, I, I know you're busy. I got a couple more for you and I want to switch to a fun one. I, I've been asking sure. this fun question for uh, a different fun question for a different guest for the last year or so. So yours is a bucket list, a uh, bucket list trip or event that you want to attend. I assume though, now that you tell me of your Greek background, you've probably done the, 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 the return to, to the, the Greek homeland. So that, yeah. I don't know, it might be a bucket list thing, but what's your bucket list trip or event? Wow. Bucket list trip or event? You know, as I as I look at this is going to sound incredibly random, but the the one that's on the list is I do want to take my wife and go to Iceland. I've heard that's just a great nice. place and it's really beautiful. And maybe because I grew up, you know, in Southern California in the heat, but just to be able to go, I'm look. A couple things for me is um, really kind of big on the environment and sustainability. Nice. So anywhere where we can go and participate and view and enjoy environment and nature, uh, I'll give you something a bit philosophical. Please. Okay, you, ready? you ready for this, Max? Hit me. I'm going to hit you with this one. And I, I kind of came to this conclusion just recently, which it's nothing profound, but maybe it is. You know, society might teach you and tell you what is good. Okay. So you might, your society might say, you need that fast car. Mm -hmm. You need that fancy computer. You need that, right? But it's what you know inside of you that you're not taught, which means the most. So right. as I look at kind of that trip or place I want to go, I always try to align it with something that nobody's ever taught me I need to go see. Gotcha. I just know in my heart that it might be nature. It might be something. It's like when I look at my kids, Nobody told me that I love them or have to. I just know it in my heart. Sure. When I look at, you know, it could be some part of nature in Iceland. I just know that it's something I want to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you're, I've, I've heard great things about Iceland and, and, uh, and I like the, uh, the approach of just getting out into nature uh, and, and doing it. So good, good stuff on the bucket list. Kudos to you. Kudos. And, and so before I ask the last question, just curious, did your son pick a college yet? You know, since you mentioned that he, that, he, that that the list is going on, where, where is he going? He he hasn't picked one yet. Um, he's he's looking. He's gotten acceptances to University of Arizona, Arizona State University, University of Loyola in Chicago. Where else? There's one more. Um, he's waiting on University of San Diego, and yeah. uh, I think one more that he needs to hear back from. But you know, he's got great choices. Yeah. And um, so he he's just excited, you know, for the opportunities. Yeah, he's got maybe three or four that he still needs to hear from. No Notre Dame, though? He's not going to follow dad and, and be a legacy? Yeah. I, I told him to apply. So, wow. I, you know, yeah, yeah. But he is a Notre Dame. He's a Notre Dame supporter and fan. So there you go. Okay. Are. Okay, that's uh, so. At least you got him to do that. So, and I assume when Notre Dame comes to town to you know play USC, then you guys can root against USC there. So that, that works. <laughs> we always root against USC. They don't have to come to town for that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. So, I know, again, I know you're busy. Last question: 2023. Uh, and and you've kind of covered it through what you've been talking about, just your focus and taking care of your you know customers, your people, your suppliers. But how is 2023 looking for you and uh, everyone at CRL? You know, really positive. I, I know that there's, you know, potential headwinds with the economy, right? Right. But that's not part of our narrative. Our narrative is that we are well equipped to go out and serve customers. And we're in a position now, I'll tell you the same thing I told the team here. There's nothing that we are waiting to get done to say good times are just around the corner. When you get this done, we're going to be something. All that is done. So now it's all about just kind of delivering and serving. So, and, and partnering with, with, with our customers. So I, you know, there really isn't, I, I just, I go into 23 feeling very positive and, and actually looking forward to it, not fearing what might happen with the economy, but really looking forward to the start of a new year. Great, great. And so, and obviously with new products like the DRX and some of the other things you've got going on, uh, a full cupboard of options to, uh, to push into the marketplace. 
Exactly. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I appreciate your time. I've been with Artie Felis, president of CR Lawrence. CRLawrence.com is the website. It's a relatively new website, very easy to access and get around. Check it out. Uh, sir, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, happy and healthy new year to you and your family. And I uh, hope your son makes the right call. It's, tell him to stay west. It's too cold here in the Midwest. It's <laughs> way, way too cold. Arizona and San Diego sounds so much better than Loyola, Chicago. Sage advice, Max. I appreciate it. You too. Great new year. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, we go uh, a little bit of a throwback to one of the OGs, the original uh, podcast guest that I had way back two years ago, Tom O'Malley, managing partner of Clover Architectural Products. You can find them online, cloverarchitecturalproducts.com, and we'll talk about what's going on uh, in their world. But Tom, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's uh, I'm 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 honored to, to get back a second time. I, I have to admit, it's uh, after I did the first one, I've been uh, TMZ has been following me around. <laughs> I feel like Carrie and Megan. I know what they feel like. So I I, get, I, I, yeah. I don't doubt it. You you are oh. you, you you are like one of the most popular people in this industry, and I'm not BSing you. Like everybody loves Tom O'Malley. That that that's got to be pretty cool for you. I I think that's really oh. neat. I, 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 there's, there's a, there's a list I know that doesn't like Tom O'Malley, I, but I, but it's more, I appreciate the, uh, the, the notoriety I got from being on your podcast. That's where all the people are stopping me, but no, thanks very much. I, I mean, obviously I've been like, you've been in the industry a long time and you get to meet a lot of people and the, you know, it's an industry. If you, if you put the time and effort in, there's a lot of great people in it and, and they, and they do want to have relationships. And um, that's probably one, one of my favorite things about the industry. And I've, you know, I, I do travel a lot and, you know, I, I, I get out and see people and I'm, I'm always honored and um, humbled when I can just kind of walk into offices and go see people. And, and, and you know, that was, that didn't happen overnight. That took a lot right. of time and effort and, you know, people getting to know me and me, get, me getting to know them and um, which is great. It, it, and it just shows how good people are. So true, true. No, you, you nailed it and said it very well. And, and, and that is one of the things I've always liked about you is that you've come to everything. And you're always, you know, meeting people and open to meet people. And you, you, you run in a bunch of different circles because you deal with glazers, you deal with some fabricators, you deal with everybody. So it's a pretty cool scenario uh, in, in getting to know people and getting to know this industry. So good on you. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to get you on the podcast because Clover made big news uh, here at the end of 2022. And uh, congratulations. Uh, it was the news of a big acquisition. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to get your, your take on it. Talk to the audience about what, what went down, what you guys did acquisition wise, and then what's next. Sure. No, th thanks very much for bringing that up. Um, so we were approached maybe two years ago by a company called American Custom Metals. Um and the owner there was, you know, kind of looking for a slight exit plan, but nothing that would happen right right away. And at the time, we weren't ready. It was, and it was right before COVID hit, um, and so we always kept in the back of our mind. And we do a lot of work with uh, Bill Anisich, who's the owner. And Bill's got a great uh, track record and following. He's he's one of the best guys I know. Everyone loves yeah. Bill. You know, he yeah. he's, he'll do whatever he can to help you. And he he built that business from the the ground up, and so. Um, we, we saw that and it was, it, it was a, it was a great local business. Um, so we, we purchased the company. We, we, we made a slight changes. Now it's American custom fabrication. Right. Um, but it's, it's the type of company that we feel like we can grow both, you know, locally and, 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 and nationally with certain products that he offers. So, um, what, what his product line is, was mainly was, uh, like brake metal and, you know, custom fabrication, and those are the things that all the local glazers would come to him for, right. and and we would as well. But the products I really love is he has a linear bar grill and a thin tube cover. And Clover itself started getting into some of those projects um, in the last you know seven to eight years. And I'll be honest, I didn't know what a thin tube cover was when I sold the first thin tube cover for <laughs> our company. And you know th there'd be plenty at our my company that says I don't know the other products I sell either, but. <laughs> Um, suffice it to say, that's one I truly did not know, and it was a really large project, and it turned out to be a great, great project for us. And we started seeing that come up more and more. Uh, we we kind of feel like it's a product that the glazing contractors, when it's put in their package, they don't really have a go-to supplier for it, um, right. and sometimes it can get a little bit custom. And we felt like that's where we could step up and, and kind of do more with that product line. 
Sure, sure. And so now that just adds to your product line. So you've got the sunshades, you've got everything. So talk a little bit about, you know, everything that Clover has to offer currently. And now, you know, adding things like these tubes is, is just a, it's just a, a, a new additional game changer for you. Sure. Thanks. Um, the, the main product line we have, I would say it would be sunshades and right. we do the everyday sunshades, which has, you know, three, four airfoils or some rectangular tubes. And what people tend to come to us more and more for is the, the one-off type projects as well. They're, they're a little bit more complicated and, and, and that could be the, you know, a perforated fan or a perforated horizontal sunshade um, or something a, a little bit more elaborate, some, you know, different twists. Uh, we're doing a lot of vertical, vertical fins with three sixteenths, three eighths, half inch plate. Um, some of these are running 20 plus feet all on their own, a single blade. Um, so those, that's one, that's our biggest, uh, revenue generator. And then we do a lot of garage screening. So we'll do parking yeah. garages, we'll do rooftop enclosures, and that could be with different, uh, corrugated perforated panels or perforated or extrusions. So those are our two biggest sides. And then we have our, what we call custom, which would be, we do a lot of cladded doors. So we could take a, a standard storefront door and clad it in stainless steel or brass or bronze months and so on. Um, and we'll, so we, we do a lot of that. Um, and then we have our interior side where we do rails for all glass doors. So we sell our, our door rails and our side lights and our header bars. We sell those to tempers around the country so they can put it with their glass and sell them off uh, as a, a complete glass package. Um, and then some other things we do is we've done a couple like seven foot windscreens for some towers. You know, we did a big one in Chicago, 110 right. North Wacker. We did one in Boston, uh, the hub at the causeway at the Boston Garden. And so those are where it's a little bit more custom stainless steel post. Um, and, you know, we're not your everyday handrail guy, but this is something where it makes sense. Uh, we've done some really custom glass canopies. We did McDonald's headquarters where we did all the steel. So th those are some of the bigger products. And then getting into what American Custom offers, now we can do some some brake metal. And we're not, that's the type of product we're not looking to go national on. There's a lot of people that do that in different markets. Sure. We, we want to kind of continue to grow what he was doing here locally in Chicago and and, and, and Bill staying on with the company uh, for several years. So that, that was that was really important. It allows him to spend more time in the shop and helping out on that side. And uh, my partner, Ed Carney's over there all the time, helping out more in the back office. Um, and then, you know, the, the linear bar grills, it's the type of thing we really think we can take off with that product. We have several jobs right now. We have one not far from you at Spectrum Health. Wonderful. Over, uh, over by you in, that, in, the, in the Michigan area. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah so, we're, so we're excited about all those types of things. And, you know, people come to us, they're not sure. I always say, if you're not sure, send it to us. We'll take a look at it. You know, I, and sometimes it's just short of a, hey, can you do this and can you cut our grass? <laughs> and always, you know, yep. we need to look at the grass to get the job. So I love it. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the, the product range we have. I, I love it. And, and what I love the, uh, about your, your projects is they're all showstoppers. You know, I mean, they, they, you know, like the one you did in Michigan that we talked about two years ago, you know, it, it stops you in your tracks. I mean, it's beautiful. And I'm sure, you know, everything that you've talked about, and that's why I definitely uh, go to cloverarchitecturalproducts.com, check out the portfolio. There's so many projects that just, it's like, wow, you know, they, 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 they blow your mind. And, and it, it, for you being a Chicago boy, and I, I know this is something that you know, may be catching you off guard, doing the McDonald's headquarters had to be a pretty cool thing, given that it was uh, started there. Sure. No, it, it was cool. And actually the, the, the main headquarters left the suburb next to where I live. Okay. And so it was kind of weird to see it move. And it went from Oak Brook, Illinois to downtown. It was a, a new CEO who wanted a younger, uh, younger workforce. And, and it, it turned out great. It was the first time we'd bought glass. And uh, I, uh, so we, we, we did all the steel. We bought all the glass from, uh, from, from our buddy Garrett over at Viracon. Yep, yep. I, I was, you know, I, I'm asking him all the time if I'm in his top 10 customers now. Um, <laughs> so, but um but yeah, so doing that whole package was really, really cool. And uh, it was, it was, it was, like you said, it's an iconic company and it's, you know, it, it's kind of, it, it's the type of thing I tell people who, you know, I, I've been in the business for 27 years and I still have people ask me, how's the window business? I'm like, I don't know. Ask someone who's yeah. in it. I mean, I, I used to just nod and say it's good, but now I just kind of chuckle and, you know, so, um, so yeah, so it's, it's nice to finally, you know, do some glass and, you know, <laughs> what's, what have you. Yeah, no, and 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 it's funny because uh, I, I would say 27 years ago, sunscreens and sh and, and mesh, you know, uh, you know, in garages, you know, didn't really exist, you know, or, or if they did, they were pretty rare. Now I think you're seeing it a ton. 
Correct. And, and, and when it did come out, it was re really basic stuff. Yeah. It was a, yeah. a really standard extrusion. And it was always the first thing off the building. If they said, hey, value engineer, take that off. And it was it was an easy, easy way for the GC to cut money off the job. And right. you, know, you just get real excited and you're like, oh, that'll never happen. You know, when you see it now, it's using so many different applications. It's, it's running vertically, horizontally. Uh, there, there, there's fins, there's, you know, different material being used. And we've done some um, uh, stuff with uh, Core 10 sunshades. We've done uh -huh. some things that mimicked uh, um, terracotta. You know, we, we've done some things to help out on a terracotta sunshade. So sure. there's so many different ways that the product is used nowadays. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so, uh, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I, I think it's, it's great because you're kind of on that, that, that plane that continues to go upwards, which is pretty, pretty darn cool. And, uh, and speaking of our mutual friend, Garrett, Garrett Henson, I've asked him to be on this podcast and he has tentatively said yes. So we may have him on here one of these days. So, so that could be big if I, if I, if I reel in Garrett Henson. Well, when you have him on, just remind him I was on twice before he was on once. <laughs> there there you go. So, and yeah. I'll remind him you're in his top 10 customers too. That'll be the exactly. best part. Exactly. I love it. So let's talk about you know, the forecast and the economy 2023. Uh, again, the nice thing about you is you, you always have your ears to the ground everywhere because you do travel a lot. You talk to a lot of people and you, you, know, you and your partners do a great job of understanding what's going on in the marketplace. What are you guys looking at economy wise and, and what's ahead for 2023? So I mean, we still feel 2023 is going to be pretty strong um, from what we, we've been seeing in the market and, and, and hearing um, and traveling around and talking to people. Um, what I have heard is people are a little bit more nervous about 2024. So yeah. we're, we're pretty optimistic in, based on our backlog for 23 and things that we're looking at even for 24. Now, we tend to kind of come at the tail end of some of the things anyways, right. but our products a lot of times are one of the last things on a building. So, you know, for us, it could be more of a worry, you know, in 24, beginning 25, but I mean, we're, we're definitely very cautiously optimistic and we're, we're seeing a lot of projects come in. And um, so from that end, we're, we're, we're optimistic, but obviously we, you know, we, we hear what's out there, you know, going on, you, you can't put your head in the sand. And so, you know, the one thing we are excited about is we do have some more products to offer now. So we're hoping you know, we can offset some of the, the downturn with by doing some different products and so forth. Yeah, diversification is is big, you know, because you've you've lived through uh, 2008 and then 2000, you know, 2008 to 2010. You have to have different different offerings to kind of survive that. So it is good that you, you're you doing that and keeping an eye on that. And uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting year. I think it's going to be a good year, but I, I think all of us are, are very uh, nervously looking at 2024. I know we all have to get through a year here, but I think I think 2024 has a, a little bit of this this you know this red flashing light on it. You know because we keep hearing it everywhere we go that we just don't know, and it's the first time in a long time I think that we have kind of a you know a worry that far out in the future. Yes, no, and, and I and I and just you know reading you know reading up on the industry and seeing what people are talking about and you know seeing the reports from the. Uh, uh, Economists, it it definitely is something that you, you definitely have to be aware of and, and and you know be smart with your finances and you know keep, yep. keep an eye on who you're selling to to make sure that they're going to be around and they can pay their bills and you know we're, we're a small company and we're, we're we we feel very fortunate on who we sell to we feel like we sell to some of the best co companies in the in the industry sure you know there's new companies that obviously we're introduced to and you know. It, it sounds bad. It's probably, uh, you know, if our banker was listening, we don't do a lot of credit checks, you know, so, but, you know, we, we, we've, we've always came out okay. And, you know, we, we feel like we're, we're okay there. And, and if you put your cautions in place, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously companies that, you know, maybe overextending themselves or, you know, expanding too much and so forth. And you just try to keep an eye on that. Absolutely. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And I'm thrilled again, Tom O'Malley's with me, managing partner, Clover Architectural Products out of Chicago, uh, Illinois area, cloverarchitecturalproducts.com, all one word. Check them out online. And so switching up a fun one, you and I have uh, over email for years have talked about television. And now I want to put you, because when we did this podcast back in 2020 uh, or 2021, uh, we did not talk anything you know that much fun. So we have the fun question now. So if you had a chance to recommend some TV shows to our audience, what would they be, my friend? Sure. So I'll just... Uh say this first i'm not a complete degenerate that just sits around but i'm gonna read off a bunch of shows you're gonna think i am i love it so, that's great yeah, yeah there's, I, I my kids are getting a little bit older now so we're, there's not as many carpools or they can drive themselves yep. or 
you know, the one rule is my, my wife always says, Hey, don't start something without me. Or if I, she sees me doing something, she, she'll, she'll kind of give me that, the, the, the little dirty eye, like, Hey, what, what are you watching? And so, um, but we do try to watch a lot of them together. If there's something she doesn't like, I'll watch when I'm traveling. But, you know, right now we just finished uh, the first few seasons of white Lotus, which uh, were wonderful. great. Yep, yep, yep. And they're fun. They're, they're, there's one season to each one and there's not a lot of carryover. You know, there was a little carryover from one to two, but right. for the most part you can jump in and there's a, con a, a conclusion at the end. Um, we're watching Yellowstone, and I really like that. Although when we started it a couple of years ago, we we hated it, and we we, we stopped after three four episodes, and then we kind of came back to it. We heard people talking, and you know it's it's just a great setting, and it, I think you get used to the the characters. Um, you know, the, the Jack Ryan, I, I love that. That's coming back yep. out in a couple of days. Um, I've been watching The Offer, uh, which is the, the fantastic. The, yeah, yep. it, it's great. Um, and then you know the ones that I've kind of completed are that. My favorites of all time are probably like the Ozarks, which, uh -huh. you know, I like it. My wife, I think, would leave me on the side of the road for Jason Bateman. Um, <laughs> I like him for other reasons. I think he's a good actor, but she she dropped me. Uh, I, I always like Breaking Bad like like you did. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Yep. Uh, Peaky Blinders. And yep. my, my favorite of all time um, that a lot of people haven't watched um, is 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 the uh, The Wire. Which really okay i i love it i i've actually watched it twice which it does make me sound like a, a complete degenerate but it was it was over a five-year period so um I, I just like the characters and i think it's uh there's five seasons and yep you know it, it's a little bit outdated because there's some beepers going on and so forth but um yeah so th those are the ones we've kind of kind of watch and then the one i think that you and i've talked about is i love listening to the uh the podcast smartless which yeah. is, uh, you know, Jason Bateman and Will Arnett and Sean Hayes. And, you know, it's a weekly one. And when I travel, I, I throw that on, listen to that. I listen to yours. And I listen to one other podcast in uh, a Chicago columnist. And it's just a good way to pass the time. And, you know, that one makes me laugh. Um, love it. Love it. Yeah. And you need, you need those releases. I love the, I love the TV shows. Uh, White Lotus, I thought was uh, great again in the second season. Uh, and it, what's funny is that you and your wife watch these shows together. My wife and I are completely opposite. She, I, we have totally different tastes. So unless I watch a Hallmark movie with her, uh, we don't watch anything together. Uh, and, and so I have to watch things when I'm exercising or when I'm on a plane or, or out of town, you know, because you won't catch her watching, watching the offer or, 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 you know, Sopranos or, or Breaking Bad, anything like that. No, nope, she wants nothing to do with any of that. So, uh, so, but I love it. And Jack Ryan, I did not know the new season of Jack Ryan's coming out. I love that show. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it comes out on the 22nd. So that'll be all right. Good. Just in time for that big snowfall. We're both getting a little hunker down and watch it. So uh, winter, I hate, I hate winter. I, I don't understand why I live here. Uh, and so, so I, and you live, you live in the windy city, you get it worse than I do in Detroit. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of TV time for you just when you don't want to go outside. That's for sure. So, but good, good stuff. I like it. Tom O'Malley, he's got good taste. So a couple more questions, because I know you're busy. You got a lot going on. Uh, you've been in this industry a long time. You said 27 plus years. I I'm curious, does anything surprise you anymore? Well, I, I would say it's amazing to me. Like, like I see like the average size of my projects keep get, keeps getting larger. Okay. You know, and, and that's, you know, obviously there's material costs more than it did 15 years ago, or you know, actually, not 100% sure what material costs were 15 years ago, but, you know, it, 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 they're using my product more and there's more of it's on the building and and, it, and it's not just like little small parts of it. It's, it's more mainstream now. But what really amazes me is is the size of some of the contracts my customers have. And, you know, I remember when I started, you know, the top 50 Glazers, you'd have a couple guys there, maybe maybe 50 to 100 million. And then you had a bunch of guys there, you know, one to 10 and whatever. Right. I mean, now, now a medium sized project is 10 to $20 million, you know, and, and that would have made you the biggest guy in, in, in Detroit or Chicago, yeah. you yeah. know, 15 years ago. So that, that, that amazes me. And, you know, some of the, some of the different ways they're using products. Um, and, and so those would be things that I, I think would really, really kind of surprise me is, 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 you know, how much of the material is being used. Um, that and probably just seeing I, I and I, people talk about it all the time, but it does seem like there really is kind of a, a little bit of a worker shortage. Um, yeah. you know, whether it's um, you know, I, I talked to some of my vendors and like they're 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 struggling, um, just filling positions and you know, and I know that's probably nationwide after the pandemic, a lot of things, but um and it it, it does seem like there's less and less younger people coming into the industry. And and I I even though I don't look like it, I still feel like one of the younger guys. And and yeah. you know, it's 
and I've been in it, like you said, 27 plus years. And um, so, you know, so those are things that it, it, it is a great industry and it, it, and sure there's other ones that maybe pay a little bit better right off the bat or so on and so forth. But it's something if, I think, I think the pay in this industry is pretty decent, you know, compared yeah. to some other ones. I, I, th I think, you know, I think so too. I mean, uh, and, and speaking of young, one of the, the guests coming up after you, Sam Olson out of uh, JA glass in Minnesota, and he's a younger guy. And that was one of the things that drew me to him was to get him on the pod to talk about, you know, youth in this industry. But I do think we suffer from perception uh, from the standpoint, we're just not a sexy industry and we got to figure out uh, Steve Widener and I talked about it on my last podcast. We got to figure out a way to start changing that perception that, the, you know, this industry pays well. It's a fun industry because look at what we do. I mean, like I was talking to you about your, your, your website and your portfolio, you know, Dallas Cowboy, you know, the star complex and, and just the work that was done there. That's cool as hell, man. I mean, you know, I think people would get into that. It's just trying to, to, you know, get their perception off of, you know, that we're not just a, a typical beat down trade. We do some really neat things. Well, for sure. And I mean, like I, I've been traveling for 27 years. I was given that opportunity right off the bat. And, you know, that's cool. It's a cool way to see the country. And, you know, you know, suffice to say, I'm not staying like in downtown Boston every time I go there or with this or that. And but I, I, I sometimes I do where I get to see different parts and, and yeah. stuff. And I think you can move up the ladder pretty quickly, too, oh, yeah. where some other industries, it takes longer. And, you know, it's, especially if you, you come in and you put the time and effort in and uh, I think the 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 ceilings, you know, limitless. So yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. That's the push. That's for that's the push for sure. So no, good, good takes, and uh, you know, good, good call. And the uh, anything surprise you anymore? So wrapping up, what's next for you and for Clover? Obviously, uh, a tremendous acquisition uh, here at the end of 2022. Uh, you know, are, are you looking to grow more? Are you going to stay steady? Are you going to add products? What what's uh, what's on your mind for uh, you and the partners for Clover coming up? Sure. Um, I, I think our main thing is we want to, you know, wrap our, our, our hands around the, the the purchase we just did and and right. kind of try to make sure we get the most out of that. And, um, you know, it's got some really great footing, uh, you know, the by having the owner stay on that, you know, build when we bought it, that really helps a lot. Yes. And they have a great, great group of fabricators over there. The We, we just did our Christmas luncheon last week and nice. excited, you know, what, what it, it, we're fortunate to have, uh, you know, a company that the people want to stay. So, but we want to kind of help them, you know, grow what they have and, you know, and, and kind of look at some different things. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're, we, we kind of want to look at, you know, um, maybe expanding some of the product offerings we have. Um, we're not looking at any other acquisitions right now. Um, if someone, someone wants to come and buy us, Hey, go ahead and give me a call. We'll, we'll, we'll be ready. I can play on the, another company softball team, but um but no i mean we we we're, you know we're, we're we're looking to uh um you know kind of hunger down with what's coming down the road and, and you know just focus on our core customers and you know and, and kind of offer them some of the different products we have so grow you know with, with our current core customer base with you know, all these different things we could do perfect yeah e elon musk was going to offer you the 44 billion before he bought twitter right? so i don't know why you turned that down you know yeah, and, he, he was he was I, yeah, I, I could only imagine what he would do with clover you know that, that, that you know that would be interesting well my friend thank you for taking the time i've been with tom o'malley managing partner clover architectural products find them online cloverarchitecturalproducts.com check out that portfolio page and all that they do tom thank you so much and a happy and a healthy new year to you and the family there in chicago and you as well, Max. Thanks again for having me back on. It was it was uh had a really fun time doing it. I always enjoy talking to you and seeing you. Always. And I'll see you at BEC in a couple months. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. To wrap things up uh, this month, I am thrilled to be joined by Sam Olson. He is the general manager at JNA Glass in Rogers, Minnesota. You can find them online at JA Glass Inc. So all one word, JA Glass Inc. dot com and. Uh, Sam, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, when I when I heard your voice at uh, in Vegas, there, I was like, you know what? I've heard that podcast. Turn around, and there you stood. I said uh, someday I'll be on that, and you'll said, "How's December sound?" Here we <laughs> here we sit. <laughs> I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you recognize my voice. I mean, and it, literally, folks, that's it. I mean, we were at the barbecue, you know, the the post event barbecue, and I was talking, and Sam just like literally picked me out of the crowd and and said, "I know your voice from the podcast," and and that that blew me away. So I knew a I had to have him on the pod, but then b one of the big reasons is that I'm looking at him like, wait, this is youth. This is a young guy in our in our world. 
You know, I mean, I, I'm excited. So I got I got to get the youth on here too. So that's what kind of pumped me up too. I mean, to to have somebody younger because I'm big big about the next generation and and guys like you, Sam, you're gonna lead the charge. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, like I, uh, like in radio, you know, long time listener, first time caller. Here we go. I love it. That's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. Well, I, I met you at Glassfield, but I honestly didn't get to meet you, you know, meet or learn about you very much. Um, you know, so I know you're in Minnesota. Uh, you know, you've got a, a nice little glass company that you're the GM at, but let's start with you and your past. Where did you grow up in Minnesota? Where'd you go to, did you do any schooling? How did you get from then to now? Yeah. Great question. Well, as a farm kid, uh, rural Minnesota farm kid, northern minnesota okay um you know <clears throat> one of those stories not so typical for for people my age but grew up uh on the tractor age eight you know out there with dad you know i love it he'll be he'd plow the field at night i'd be on it in the day right we put up hay throwing hay bales from age okay. eight. traveled um to different homes as better opportunities came up for for hay land right Okay. Um, sold, sold hay to horse people. If right. Any of your listeners know what uh, that life is like. You know how uh, fun that can be. But <clears throat> yeah, grew up a farmer. Got my work ethic under the belt. I think from that. Yeah. Uh, went, went to uh, college to be an engineer. And decided uh, <clears throat> engineering and working with engineers engineers might not be uh, my calling. Right. Okay. Okay. So dropped out, uh, got married. Okay. And then, uh, started going towards business school. And then once, okay. once I was in that, uh, discovered that, uh, we were just reading people who had been there. Right. Uh -huh. And, uh, -huh. uh, I don't think the library knew it had going, uh, they could be charging a lot more for those same books, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I continued to do that in, uh, in the meantime, uh, looking for work. My cousin's like, Hey, I work at this auto glass company. Why don't, uh, why don't you jump on and let's, let's start a flat glass division. You've okay. heard the story probably a hundred times. Yeah. Where yeah. Auto glass company. Hey, people are calling us for their home windows. Sam, you've installed, done some, a little bit of construction in the off season from doing, Hey, um, you know, windows. So come on, let's, sure. let's run this thing. Right. So <clears throat> That turned into me discovering that uh, I have an unhealthy tendency to lean on the uh, let's figure it out button. Okay. Okay. I like right? it. So let's figure it out. Turned into me, you know, 20 year old kid uh, getting a hold of someone at Conier. Nice. Um, convincing them to sell me enough for a project. Wow. Be becoming a. Uh, Let's see how how would this order work? A fabricator, right? If I'm right. Myself, um, doing the takeoff, doing the drawings, a little bit of drafting, to then becoming a, a project manager, purchaser, the whole nine yards. And instantly, I was thrown into the commercial glazing world of hmm. lean on the people who'd been there before, right? Have the conversations with the local greats, right? Right. I would lean on. Uh, in Minnesota, we're in Northwestern. Time, right. right? Yeah, Bill Sullivan incredible... and company are their greatest. Yep. They're great people. Great people. Yep. And, and, and that's where I got to know, you know, Mel Detmer, yeah. where she was just coming up in the industry as well. And I, I would just bring the problems to them. Be like, Hey, I don't know how to do this. You guys are, are bigger than me. So help me figure this sucker out. And, uh, from there it was just kicking, kicking the can, moving the ball, getting to the next project, fast forward. I've got multiple people working with me under me, project managing. Super. Um, and 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 getting really great clients uh, to align with me and in, in, in figuring and problem solving uh, for their building, for their projects, their their service projects, and everything. So, man, I was well, there for for quite a while. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well, so so just to hold your thought, uh, a couple things. One is, uh, you know, uh, you know, Bryn, uh, obviously a legendary brand in in your area. Bill Sullivan, one of the classiest guys around. Former glass industry, past not a former past glass industry MVP of mine. 
uh, good man. Melanie Detmer is a rock star. Uh, rock star Mel is what I call her, and and she is awesome. So it doesn't surprise me uh, that. And it was funny when I told her that I met you at Glassfield and and wanted to have you on the podcast. I thought she was going to explode, uh, and if she would explode, she'd explode into like colorful confetti. Uh, just because that's her personality. She's just yep. Uh, yep. so much energy. She's awesome. Uh, and and so, but with you, you know, let, uh, just backing up on a tractor at eight, uh, that, yeah. that, that, that had to be something interesting. Yeah. I look, I look now at my kids and I, I'm thinking I could barely trust you on a riding <laughs> lawnmower. Yes. Um, for my dad to say, uh, keep it straight here, turn there and keep it in this gear. Um, yell if you need to figure out how to stop, but you put the clutch in and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it, he just, he was so trusting. And, uh, you know, it, it, part of life is it, it was just doing what you could to keep sure. your family moving, right? Sure. Small town. It was, it was how he was raised, right? So yeah. he did what he knew best and, and brought me along in that world. Um, but yeah, it, it, when I look back and in, in what I look, when I tell the story to other people, it, I see it as normal, right? Yeah. And, yeah. To, to, to many, it's, it's almost shocking, like almost child labor law problems. Yeah, but, that's, that's but, what you, all you do. That's what you grew up with. Yeah. And, and I, and I can't complain. I mean, I knew how to change a starter on a yeah. John Deere A <laughs> at age 10, just like it was second nature. And I'm not too many people get that, you know, experience, let alone that, that's uh, fantastic. learn that work ethic. In, that, on, on and, and work ethic. It, it, I was just going to say the work ethic of a farmer is like second to none. My wife grew up on a farm and, and her work ethic is off the charts. And, and so, you know, because farming, you, you, you know, you, you have to go, you, you can't kick the can down the road. I mean, that's the, you know, when, when the time says go, you go and you go, right. you know, and so uh, the, the work ethic that is instilled in you, Sam, is, is incredible. So you make your way to the glass industry. I love the auto glass thing because uh, again, and, and, you know, I consulted with, with Binswanger glass for several years and, you know, they had auto glass and, and flat glass and, you know, it is funny. A lot of people will call an auto glass place for a window, uh, not knowing any difference. So good on, on you guys to figure out how to diversify J and a glass and move into commercial. I love the guts, the pure guts to call con air and say, Hey, uh, I, I want to, uh, you know, buy some framing. So, Talk about uh, J and A Glass. You know, you yeah. know w- what you guys do now, and 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 where what your evolution is going forward. Yeah. So I I I started here six years ago as as okay. GM, right? Okay. Um, took took that experience. Uh, uh, a few glass companies wanted me. You know, um, knew that I could do do the work, but but this this place kind of gave me an opportunity. Um, to, to run. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we're a, you know, full service glass company, about 75% uh, commercial glazing storefront okay. curtain wall entrances, gotcha. 25% uh, high end custom shower doors. Right. Okay. For, okay. For builders um, around, you know, Lake Minnetonka, all those sure. beautiful homes. Right. Sure. Um, they, they really like their glass and we like that. They like their glass. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. We are, we are happy to do business with the, oh, yeah. with the clients around there. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we've really grown in the last three years. I know it's probably a common thing you hear the the amount of growth available for everyone while the industry is so strong back to the farming, make hay while the sun is shining. Sure. Sure. I think think we've done well, but I can't, I can't say that it was anything that, that I did. I really have a great group of individuals here. Um, you know, starting at the installer, they're my biggest sales guy. When I've got my clients calling and naming my guys by name saying, Hey, this is the next one I have. Yeah. It's yours. As long as I can get Dave on my project, sure. as long as I can get Jason there to yeah. run the thing. How can you, how can you sell anything better than that? Yeah. Pretty much estimate and sold before you, you even step foot on the, on, on getting a bid invite or anything like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a really, a really fun run. Um, you know, looking Looking forward, I, I know we'll get into it a little bit here, but it, you know, I, I think we've we've set ourselves up here to to really really take the next step. I like it. I like it, and uh, it, no doubt uh, it's a pretty cool uh, approach that you guys have 
have have gotten off the ground with. And uh, this is such a relationship based industry, but also relationship uh, not only with your suppliers and, and, and so on, but with your clients. And so when your clients are saying, "Hey, we love this guy so much," you know, we want him on the next job. I mean, like you said, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. And and it's funny because the guest on previous to you, Tom O'Malley. I mean, he's built his entire business off the the relationship side. You know, people buy because of him, and it sounds like you and your folks have built that same sort of camaraderie up in the in the in the Minnesota area. So that's awesome. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. When I when I started here, there was, I was a twelfth person. We've got forty four. Nice. So you know, it, it's and it's all not due to pushing the growth button, except for picking up the phone. Number mm-hmm. one, right? Answering those emails. And being true to what your word is, building that relationship through and through, um, shaking a hand, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 something that uh, has has become a little bit less in the days of this post COVID era or whatever you yeah. want to call it. You know, yeah. Re- relearning that personal relationship really gives some rope to be able to uh, to to grow a business and grow the relationship and the opportunity. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And so, so uh, I'm with uh, Sam Olson, general manager at J&A Glass in Rogers, Minnesota. Check them out online at jaglassinc.com. Uh, and, and so, you know, let's talk about, you know, you were at, you joined when they were 12 employees strong. Now you're at 44. So you're still a little bit on the smaller side, but you're growing. What, what you know, you, you face some challenges uh, and, and that's something you and I talked about briefly over email. What are, what are some of the challenges that you face and how do you ever overcome those, you know, when, when you're battling in an area where you're facing against companies that might have two, 300 people? Yeah. You know, the typical answer is probably, probably, you know, vendor access. Right. But, mm-hmm. but really I think I'm over, I'm over that now to where I, I used to have to call the companies that I could see the trucks drive by my, my dock every day. Right, it's like, Hey, right. you could put one more stop on your day. I'm right, right there. Yeah. And then, but now that those same companies are calling me looking for more business and it's, nice. it's satisfying in that regard. It but, is. But, yeah. but really, but really, I think, I think my, my current, you know, mission is, is to understand and, and maybe help get those large suppliers, those larger companies, to, to understand and get back to the attitude of service. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, taking care of that end user that decided, you know, 10, 30 years ago that their product was the best to put in their building. In those 10 to 30 years, what has that brand or supplier done to service that client, you know? And if it has been a great, great relationship, then when they expand and they're ready to build that next building, guess what? When that architect recommends their brand they're going to be absolutely check right i feel like it's it's fallen away from that in the last five years where yeah. that 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 personal touch of um servicing and understanding the communication that needs to come around you know even the repair or replacement world um you know it, it these larger manufacturers they everyone has to care about their bottom line right yeah. um and, and, and that's what we're in business for. But there, there's, this, there's this piece that I think can really be pushed by uh, the sales reps. And I think that's where the solution lies, is that, um, you know, you got your old castle, your buyer cons, your con ears, um, these giant companies that have done an incredible job to grow their market share. But in, in the meantime, someone needs to remember the end user, not so much mm-hmm. me. There's, there's a lot of me that can throw that in, that can install yeah. that in a professional way, right? But the, that end user, that ownership group that is looking to expand, build, whatever it is, um, the, the sales reps, unfortunately, whether it's due to the COVID, um, you know, lapse of being in front of people. I like to relate it to kids, kids mm-hmm. these days, not being able to go to restaurants when they're younger. Right. So now you see these little two to four year olds um, acting out in the middle of a restaurant because right, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. They haven't been, they haven't been trained. They haven't been given the opportunity. Right. Right. So as, as the, the industry has pushed out um, due to retirement or whatever, a lot of these original sales reps that, that would go to bat for the client, go to bat for the, for the ownership group, for the yeah. small glass company. Um, 
They've been replaced by a new guard that is a mouthpiece for the management group, for the internal, you know, you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, where it's, it's, it's become more about analytics and numbers than, than right. and that's a problem when all is said and done. Right. Who's advocating for the customer or for the small glass company? You know, that, that, that lack of give and pull that we have due to not having a handshake introduction. Um, a phone call to say, hey, you know, can we check? Can we look into this? Can we make sure that this is the yeah. best that we can do? That, 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 it's so, so rare. But the guys that do do that, yep. everyone in my office calls them first for every yeah, visit. That's, yeah, it, that's the, yeah, and dead on. Then that's what I was saying about a guy like Tom. That's what he does. And that's why he has so much respect. But it is funny that you said that, that I mean, I've talked about it on the podcast before, you know, the lack of communication, the forcing, you know, when you have a big job and, and you're, you're calling to make sure the job's on time and checking in with people versus them, you know, being in touch with you, making sure everything's on, on time. Um, those are the things that drive me crazy. I write about that every almost weekly about, you know, up, upping the communication angle. Uh, but it is something that we we've lost. I think post COVID is some of that, that relationship and, and being frank and being, you know, being, t t you know, there in presence for, you know, for the industry. And we've got to get back to that. Uh, I, I love technical sales. Don't get me wrong. I think technical yeah. sales is huge. I love a salesperson that, that can talk heavy technical. I think that's huge, but they also have to be willing to be up on the front line and willing to be that advocate when all is said and done and be able to say, Sam, I'm looking into it. And they actually do call you back. I joke with my daughter when somebody says, I'll look into it and get back to you. It means, no, I'm not going to look into it and get back to you, you know, but actually do it. And so I, I like what you're saying. And I think you're dead on there. Yeah. And, and, and from a place of thankfulness, you know, to, to remind your team for anyone else listening that when, when you do get a hold of, of a, a good rep to, to reciprocate that, that thankfulness back to them. Hey, like, Hey, when you, when, I appreciate when you say you're going to call me on a Wednesday, you called me on Tuesday to let me know that you already got it figured out. Right. Yeah. That, that goes such a long ways. Oh, yeah. and, and, and we need to be, you know, above the rest of the, the construction. Yeah. You know, we field. do. Yeah. Why not? We we're, we're usually first in technology. We've got these, we've got these incredible pieces of software that integrate with our manufacturing techniques that we are so close to even even almost having an open window to every little manufacturing mm -hmm. step to where it's almost like the Domino's pizza tracker. Where's yeah. my glass? It could be as simple as that on a website, right? We're so close, but yet we still need that personal touch of, of someone to go to bat and say, hey, I mean, I almost lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> I should give me say something. That. Give yeah. me something. Give at me least something. To say, hey, I'm going to follow up with it. And even if it's bad news, knowing that you stuck your neck out, for the small guy, for that end user, for that a business, for that ownership group, goes so far to where you're guaranteed to get that next call because, hey, if they care about this small little detail that much that they're going to take time out of their day to see it through, then they deserve this 250,000 square foot project that yeah. I've got going next. Right? Yeah. And, and I, to me, it sounds simple. And, and maybe I'm dying on a hill by myself here. No. But I, I, that's, that's, my, that's my current push. And I'd, I'd love to see and hear others that would like to see the same because I don't think I'm too far out of that. No, you're not. You're not. And I will say uh, no news is worse than bad news. You know, uh, any day of the week, uh, you know, it, it's it's the worst to deliver bad news, but it's it's even more horrendous to not deliver it at all. You know, it makes it just worse. So, all right. So we talked about the negatives. So now I get to ask you, what, what are the favorites since you've been in this industry, you know, a good few years now, what, six plus years, I believe you said, uh, what's your favorite part of the glass industry? Yeah. So I've been, I've been in the industry for 15 years. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yep. Just, just in front of JNA for six. Um, okay. The, the relationships, it all comes back to that. That is, that is, how can that not be your favorite part of this yep. industry? I mean, from, from being able to go to the glass conferences and, mm -hmm. and to see people again, to shake hands, you know, that, that building uh, relationship and con contacts of like, Hey, have you tried using their product or let me walk you over to here. Let me, Hey, I got a guy for that. This guy lives in California, but he has the answer for everything. Let me yeah. call him real quick. You know, it, it, it is the most fun when, when you can be a part of that. And for me, Watching that happen with my staff 
has mm-hmm. got to be the best. I'm a basketball coach. I coach fifth and sixth grade basketball. Love it. Coach. Love when it. you see something click on the on the court, a play, a movement, a, an off ball screen, a, a great pass, and you look down at your assistant coach and it's like thumbs up. They got it. It's clicking. Yeah. Nothing is more satisfying. When I'm when, when acting as general manager here, right? I'm I'm the general manager, whatever you want to call it. Um, seeing my team. My APMs, project coordinators, foreman, glazers, shop guys, receptionists, my finance staff, they all have contacts to people outside of this company. Yeah. And those people get to know them by name. And those people call because the same thing that I want is an inside man with my vendors. They have that with us. Yeah. Yeah. Answering that phone call, answering that email, building that relationship, grabbing a beer after work with them, you know, meeting them for a lunch, seeing them at an event high five and shaking hands. That's what is exciting about the glass industry. It's small. Everybody knows everybody. Yes. I I think I met you back in the arch days, right <laughs> when I was right when I was starting out. It, I, my I, memory's I, my memory's mush. So you may very well have met me and I had you, no you idea. You probably helped me load a piece of glass cuz you're short-handed trying to yeah. trying to I, put a get a truck together back in the Who knows. But yeah. it, but um it, you know continue seeing you know those forever clients come back to us. Not for anything I'm doing, but because of the time that we take to make sure that they know we exist for them, that we're going to problem solve for them. So it's a win-win, a continued business relationship. That is my favorite part of the business. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I'm with Sam Olson, General Manager, JNA Glass in Rogers, Minnesota. JA Glass Inc., uh, J A G L A S S I N C dot com for their website. So, switching up, fun question for you. Uh, it fit, and, and, and it was funny, you co- coach fifth and sixth grade basketball. I'd ask you your favorite defense to play with those guys, but I'm going to go with uh, w- what's your favorite band or music star? I'm curious uh, of, of your taste there, uh, especially now that I know you grew up on a farm in Minnesota. I'm really curious to see what your tastes are. So, um, I dislike country very much. So okay. I listened to about everything else because country was a way of life where I was from. Uh, so yep. hearing that kind of connects the dots of, ugh, I don't like that. There's a band named Amberlin. They're a okay. smaller band that came out maybe 2003. Um, no one's going to know who they are. No. I like I them so much. I named my daughter after them. Really? <laughs> wow. A N B E R L I N. They're kind of a, uh, they're rock, you know, a little more, a little harder, but, but uh, yeah, that, that is my favorite brand band. I have, I have five kids. She's uh, she was my fifth. And uh, nice. when the wife, when the wife uh, asked, you know, I want to name her Amberlynn. I'm, I'm like, well, you don't have to convince me. I already got the t-shirt. That's so cool. <laughs> now I, I, I have to admit, I'm a music guy. I love music. Yeah. I can't play it uh, a lick. I don't read it, but I love music and I love all styles. I've never heard of this band. So now I have to look it up. I there mean, you go. if you looked at my, you know, and I'm uh, show you how old I am. I still use an iPod. If you looked at my iPod, I mean, I've got everything under the sun on this, this iPod, uh, but I've never heard of Amberlynn and I'm going to have to check it out. And I dig that you named your daughter after that. That is so cool. That is so cool. Uh, I, I love that. And, uh, and, and now I don't think, you know, I don't think my wife would have gone for if we named one of our kids, Motley Crue Pearlstein. So at least you got a good, a good name with Amberlin that works for a kid's name. Motley yes. Crue, uh, Pearlstein, I don't think would work, uh, as much. He, he, my, my second kid is kind of Motley sometimes. So I think it, uh, the, that would have worked, but I love it. I love it. That's, uh, that's why I ask these questions. I learn something new every day and I will be checking out Amberlin after we're done here for sure. All right, a couple more questions because I know you're busy. You're running a, 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 a jumping operation there. Uh, if I had the ability to name you czar of the glass world, and I love and I have to ask this because I like your, your, your energy and your approach to things, what would be one of the first things you would do to our space? You know, may, maybe make it, you know, like I was saying, be able to have a window into what's going on, yep. you know, in, in the manufacturing world, just to, just to, just to help ease that communication, you know, to get everybody on the same page, um, to get past this COVID excuse, right? Yeah. To get that out of everybody's mouth. Let's be the leaders in the construction industry. Let's let's show up and, and show how it can be done and let everyone else make the excuses. If I could change everyone's mindset as the czar, I think that's what I would push. For. I love it. That's a good one. That's uh 
I, I knew you'd come through. That's a great, great answer. Great answer. All right. So wrapping up uh, 2023, you mentioned briefly, you guys are, are really rolling. Uh, so specifically, how is the year looking for you? And I'm curious, I've been asking this in the last couple months to all my guests, uh, just to get a feel for what we're up against next year. How do things look for Sam Olson and JNA Glass? Incredible. Um, great. I've got, I've got more contracts on the books than we've ever had. Um, I can't complain. You know, so, I, I worked through 07, 08. I, I know what the other side looks like. I, I hope we don't ever have to hit that, but 2023 is not going to be that um, good. as far as my perspective goes. Um, yeah, it's frustrating to think it could slow down when, when the opportunities have been so great for so many of us, right? Yeah. Um, make the hay while the sun's still shining. That's what we got to do. And that's what we're going to continue to do. I love it. I love it. Now you're, 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 you are dead on an, an impressive, uh, you know, career, uh, going for you. And I mean, even though you, you've been in this space for, for what, 15 years, you said you don't look like it. Uh, you, you look, you got those, those, those young looks. I give you credit there. Uh, I keep, you get, I keep getting asked when I'm retiring. That's how old I look right now. You know, you're probably getting carded. I guarantee you get carded at any bar you go to. Uh, but I, I love your approach and, uh, and I'm excited. I'm thrilled to meet somebody new and, and, and with the energy. So this has been a, a great honor to get to talk with you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Again, being, being a little voice from the, from the small glass companies. It's, it's been on such a prestigious podcast as yours. It's been, it's been an honor. It truly has. Uh, awesome. I've been with Sam Olson, general manager, JNA Glass in Rogers, Minnesota. Uh, check them out online at jaglassinc.com. And Sam, I look forward to seeing you at the next event, next show, whatever the case may be, uh, and, and look forward to continue to follow your your uh, your path. I mean, this is this is super cool, and I will let you know about Amberlin. I cannot wait to check this band out. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks. Okay, okay, that wraps up things for this month. Uh, before I go, uh, if you're not watching the uh, miniseries on Netflix called Aftershock, uh, you're kind of missing out. It's only three episodes. It's about the earthquake that hit Nepal, uh, I think in 2015, uh, hit around the Mount Everest area. The, the, the video that they pulled from this thing, especially when the avalanches were coming and, and so on, I mean, you're on the edge of your seat. Uh, some pretty heavy stuff, three different stories going on at once. Uh, my friend Jeremy Hoy of Hartung Glass uh, had turned me on to it. Jeremy was dead on as usual, uh, so really, really good. Netflix, it's called Aftershock, three episodes. Check them out. So that wraps things up on the podcast side. Once again, this podcast brought to you by myglassclass.com uh, for your glass and glazing education. More than 100 courses. You want to go check it out. Uh, training is important. We know it's important. Take advantage of this training. It's from the National Glass Association, myglassclass.com uh, for the ultimate in glass and glazing education. Uh, learn it today. Go there today and check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll talk you all through it. Myglassclass.com. All right. Thanks again to my guests, Artie, Tom, Sam. We will be back next month. Power packed uh, again with some really interesting guests from all points of their industry. Thank you so much for watching and listening and supporting. And we will see you in February. Oh, the music is stopped.